Ashley Pond was a 12-year-old girl who lived in Newell Creek Village apartment in Oregon with her mother Laurie. On the 9th of January 2002, Ashley was running late to school. It was a little after 8am and the bus was just minutes away. The walk up the hill to the bus stop was less than 10 minutes. She was a popular student who was a member of both swimming and dance teams. On that day, she was looking forward to dance practice after school. Laurie expected to hear from her at around 6.15pm, but when she didn't, she became worried and called the school. She found out that she had not been there that day. Laurie called the police and reported her daughter missing. She told them that none of Ashley's clothes or belongings were missing and that she didn't believe that Ashley ran away. Authorities agreed and believed that Ashley was likely abducted. Detectives learned from Ashley's classmates that she never got on the bus. They canvassed the neighbourhood and surrounding woods, searched Ashley's internet activity, ran a background check on her father and found no leads despite the assistance from the FBI. Meanwhile, 13-year-old Miranda Gaddis, Ashley's neighbour, dance team and close friend, found herself at the centre of the investigation. On the 8th of March 2002, Miranda's mum Michelle Duffy left for work at 7.30am. Authorities believe that Miranda left around about 8am and went up the hill to the bus stop. At around 1.20pm, Miranda's older sister called their mum to tell them that Miranda had not been at school that day. Ms Duffy called the school and found out that Miranda was indeed absent. She reported her missing and the FBI was again called in to investigate. The circumstances surrounding Miranda's disappearance and presumed abduction were eerily similar to Ashley's two months earlier. It seemed that whoever the perpetrator was, he or she seemed to be targeting the same type of girl. There were striking resemblances between Ashley and Miranda. They were close in age, involved in similar activities, had similar facial features, height, weight, and both had brown eyes. And most importantly, both girls disappeared on the way to the bus stop. Authorities believe that a stranger may have abducted them while on the way there. However, without an apparent crime scene or physical evidence, authorities began to investigate the possibility that they were taken by someone that they knew. Since they disappeared, students were picked up from their homes instead of from bus stops. However, the residents of the Newell Creek apartment complex were terrified that a child abductor and possible serial killer walked amongst them. The girls' parents hoped that they would one day be found. While investigating, the authorities were trying to work out whether the girls were abducted by someone they knew or by a stranger. The girls' mothers didn't believe that they would have gone with a stranger, so they figured that they were abducted by someone they knew and trusted. The case was solved on the 24th of August, 2002, when human remains were found in a microwave box in a storage shed behind the rented home of a 39-year-old Ward Weaver who lived down the street from Newell Creek Apartment Complex. An autopsy confirmed that they were Miranda's. Two days later, a second set of remains were located in a 55-gallon barrel under a suspicious concrete slab on his property. He claimed that the slab was put there recently for his hot tub. They were identified as Ashley's remains the following Sunday. Weaver was first arrested on the 13th of August that same year on an unrelated rape charge. The victim was his son's 19-year-old girlfriend. His son had called 911 about his girlfriend, but also told dispatchers that his father had killed the girls. Both of the girls were friends with Weaver's 12-year-old daughter and had visited her at Weaver's home. Authorities discovered that Ashley was a friend of Weaver's daughter. A year before the disappearances, Ashley had accused him of molesting her. The problem for investigators was they were awash in possible suspects, some 28 suspects that lived in the same apartment complex that could not be ruled out. For months, authorities had no real evidence that a crime had been committed. It wasn't until Weaver attacked his son's girlfriend and the FBI was able to obtain a warrant to search his property. Soon after the grisly discovery of the girls' bodies, Weaver was charged with the murders. To avoid the death penalty, he confessed and pleaded guilty to the rape and murder of his daughter's friends. He's now serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole. 
Interestingly, in August of 2001, Pond accused Weaver of attempting to rape her at his house, and the incident was reported to police. However, charges were not formally filed by law enforcement. In May of 1996, 24-year-old Julianne Williams and her 26-year-old girlfriend, Laura Winans, went on a camping trip at Shenandoah National Park in Virginia. They took their golden retriever Taj with them. The couple went on a trip to spend some time together before Julianne started a new job at Lake Champlain in Vermont. They were last seen alive on the trail on the 24th of May. On the 31st of May, Julianne's father contacted the authorities. He let them know that the women were missing and they were overdue from their camping trip. They found the car parked at Skyland Lodge and began a search of nearby trails. Park rangers quickly found their dog wandering around unharmed and without a leash, but there was no sign of the women. The following day, a grisly discovery was made. Their slain bodies were found in the park, about a quarter of a mile from Skyline Drive off the Appalachian Trail. Their hands were bound, their mouths were gagged, and their throats were slit. Both were partially undressed, yet neither women had been sexually assaulted, or at least no semen was found. Laura was found in a tent, and Julie's body, along with a sleeping bag and sleeping pad, was approximately 30 to 40 feet away, down a little embankment. The bodies were undiscovered all of this time, despite it being in such a popular part of the park, on a busy holiday weekend, because of the backcountry regulations at the time, stated that backpackers had to camp away from designated trails, fire roads, and developed areas. It wasn't a heavily used or heavily travelled trail. They were following the backcountry regulations at the time, which required them to be out of sight. A camera was discovered at the camp, with photographs of their hike along the White Oak Canyon Trail. They also climbed Hawksbill, the highest mountain in Shenandoah, before they pitched camp for the last time, a few days after they entered the park. Maryland resident Daryl Rice was a prime suspect in the murders. In July of 1997, he was arrested for the attempted abduction of a female bicyclist in Shenandoah National Park. He pleaded guilty to the crime and received an 11-year sentence. In April of 2002, he was charged with Julianne and Laura's murders. Investigators claimed that he killed the couple because he hated women and homosexuals. He made statements to the investigators that he hated gays and preyed on women because they are more vulnerable than men. He also stated that the women deserved to die because of their sexual orientation. He reportedly had poor relationships with female co-workers, often verbally harassing them. He was also seen on videotape entering the park on the 25th of May and 26th in 1996. Furthermore, a witness saw him in the park around the time of the murders. However, investigators failed to connect forensic evidence from the crime scene to Rice. In 2004, the charges against him were dropped due to the lack of evidence. He was later connected to the murder of Alicia Reynolds and the attempted abductions known as Route 29 Stalker. He pleaded no contest to the attempted abduction of one of the Stalker victims. Serial killer Richard Evanitz was considered a suspect in the murders, but he committed suicide in 2002 as police were about to arrest him in three other murders. It was not known if any evidence connected him to this case. The FBI was investigating the case in connection with the 1986 murder of a lesbian couple that took place in eastern Virginia, in which the victims were similarly bound and slashed. A double murder that the FBI considers to be the first of a possible series of murders in that state, the others involving heterosexual couples. It's believed that their murders were connected to the death of Alicia Reynolds. The FBI continues to investigate the case. Although Daryl Rice remains a suspect, he was released from prison in 2011. 24 years later, the case remains unsolved. <laughs>